Good morning, it's Tuesday, August 20th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Overnight, the precious metals continue to march higher after yesterday's decline in the gold-silver ratio. Silver continues to gain on gold prices with the gold-silver ratio dropping to 86 to 1. How you calculate the gold-silver ratio is you just take the price of one ounce of gold, divide it by one ounce of silver, and it'll come out to about 85.89 ounces for silver for one ounce of gold. So looking at prices overnight, you do have the December gold up $20 at 2561. New record highs overnight, that high being 2563.80. Looking at September silver, now if you're gonna look to add silver, Go to the December contract There's a, as there's only about a week left on September. I'm not sure when they'll roll. We're continuing to monitor when we're seeing the open interest and also the volume shift from that September contract to the December. Now, September silver, 29.81, up 50 cents. That's 1.73%. Great move in the silver market overnight. Copper futures up 170, trading at 419. That's up about a half a percent here. So gold prices, they settled above $2,500. They extended their gains on the record highs and they've gained more than 20 percent this year so fantastic commodity a lot of central bank buying a lot of benefit here from a decline in interest rates here in anticipation that the fed will cut rates silver prices here mostly benefiting from not only that gold price is taking off but they've really lagged but it was was really copper that ignited the the flames underneath that silver market the last week here. So the concern that I have, just a little bit of concern, you always want to have kind of one foot out the door when you trade commodities. You got car insurance, you don't crash your car every day. You got homeowners insurance, you got health insurance, you don't hurt yourself every day. But you do want to be aware of some things that are going on in the background here. So you do have the union at BHP's, that Escondida Copper Mine in Chile, they did sign a new deal that ended the risk of a strike. Now remember we did have several days where copper production and silver production were taken offline that further strains the supplies and that's production that'll never be brought back online so prices do have to adjust to that but now with those prices or I'm sorry with the mines back in operation we're not seeing any kind of follow through action so the last time they had a strike it went on for 44 days prices really ignited higher on that so this is a bit more of a muted reaction and I think that you know, we're going to continue to want to monitor things like global equities, which continue to recover. Traders are really focusing, though, on that Jackson Hole Symposium on Friday. The dollar index breaks below 102 and Treasury yield. If you want to look at that, they're continuing to consolidate. They're making this pennant type of formation. So they could break out one way or the other, and a lot of it's going to hinge on what he says here later in the week. Now, if you look at things that are coming out, not really much anything. No real economic data. The only time we do get economic data here this week is really on Thursday where we get the unemployment claims, the flash manufacturing PMI. That's really important for those precious metals, especially those base metals. But today we're going to have FOMC member Bostic and Barr are both going to speak here, but it's later in the afternoon. Now looking at the CME's Fed watch tool, no real significant change overnight. 75% chance that the Fed cuts 25 basis points and a 24% chance that the Fed cuts 50 basis points now the way that a lot of it works when they do cut rates at the first time usually the markets actually take a step back because of the fact that you're starting to see people that were getting north of five percent on their money markets many of the older people that rely on that it'll it'll come off so yields are going to come off that they're earning on their their bank accounts and things like that and people actually tighten up the belt for just a brief moment and also lenders become slightly concerned that hey the fed's cutting rates and that may imp imply that there's there's going to be a bit of a storm ahead as far as the economy so they also do tighten up their lending so markets tend to take a bit of a step back here um, when we get that first interest rate cuts now taking it to the chart on the gold market so there's a couple things here to, to look at is that one gold prices are at record highs right and I've traded commodities for 25 years about as a licensed commodity brokers I've seen almost every commodity hit record highs in those last 25 years you get a couple things you get a lot of people that come in they chase the market they buy those tops and they'll end up riding it all the way down the strategy that you need to 
um, look at when you buy these things is that you need to take more of a defined planning approach when you buy these things. So if you were going to buy gold prices and say you bought the very high tick here today on the markets, what you want to look at is you want to have some defined stops and you also want to have places where you need to average in at. So if you did buy that top, you want to look at things like, hey, 2,500 chances are a psychological level that will be retested. That could be a great spot to add that second contract. But then below that, you want to have two tight stops. You want to have one which is going to be for your tradable position, and then you want one for your long-term position. So you wanna look at some key levels here, the 50-day moving average on the gold market, 24.39, and then also you wanna look at kind of that recent low here from the August 16th low, which was right around that 24.88. So if you were to buy two contracts, you would, and you say you did buy the top, buy the top, Look at a psychological level where the market may retest to add to that position to bring your dollar cost average down, but then also have two tights, one tight stop below that 2488, and then have your line in the sand type stop at a key level like a 50 day moving average, which is 2439. If gold prices broke below that level, chances are. It's not gonna look very good at all. So then the second thing you wanna look at, so we've measured out a couple different levels here, is now you wanna look at the proper contract size given your particular account. So a lot of people don't like to see more than like two or 4% of volatility in their account whatsoever. So remember that gold futures do have a 10 ounce contract, they've got a 50 ounce contract, they've got 100 ounce contracts, and based upon those types of things, you can you could build out your position sizing. Now with the volatility stepping up being 40 and $50, a day here you know you are going to want to also volatility adjust your sizes so oftentimes that 10 ounce contract just works for a lot of people here in many different ways now that's getting a little bit on the strategy looking at the sil silver contract did break through the 50 day moving average and also is if it closes above there it's probably ch chances are going to trigger more of a neutral trend and you look at silver prices all the way from may that's when they peaked really they've just kind of cycled back and forth okay if we did start to turn back down it would be a higher low on the charts and you know that might indicate a change in direction but really kind of neutral trend here so not that not that great here yet we need to get some breakouts over that $30 level and then we'll start getting the chasers come in people will ride it back up to that 3250 level and then if we could break out from there party and beyond. Now copper futures back above the 200 day moving average and also threatening if we need to get to about 428 to 434 then we would start chewing into more of a neutral type of trading affair. Remember China big big problems over there economically so they need to see a turnaround there. Also we did see some of the little bit I think the reason why gold prices were only up three dollars yesterday was we did see those peace talks in the Middle East we saw crude oil futures get uh, bludgeoned to death here down about two dollars and thirty cents yesterday small recovery so could be sell the sell the rumor that they they signed the peace deal and then it could be buy on crude oil buy that the peace deal has been signed because of the fact that hey what could happen things could escalate again as they they oftentimes do you got any questions a little bit longer video give me a call 312-858-7303 remember futures option trading does involve risk of loss may not be suitable to all investors good luck good trading